So those objects we have understood. One of the important things to note here is the transparent object, the opaque objects, they stop the light. We said that, right? They stop the light and they reflect the light back. So if I'm standing behind it, so let's say there's a source of light, then there is an opaque object. And then I'm standing back right here. If I'm looking at the source of light standing here, I would only be able to partially see the source of light because part of it would be hidden by this object. So this object is casting its shadow on me. That is how we would interpret it. It's not allowing all the light from the source to reach me. It's, it's blocking, it's blocking part of the light. If I were to place a screen, which is really a sheet of paper, any sheet, any, anything which can, on which I can capture the light, if I were to place it right here, what I would see, I would see that the part of the light which is blocked by this object, there would, there would appear to be a dark region, a very dark region on this sheet of paper, which we'll call it a screen. So on this screen, there would be a dark region seen where the object is blocking the light of the source. This dark region is known as a shadow. Same thing we see in cricket. So you ask me where? See, the photons of light or the balls of cricket, they are going and the baller is throwing them to inside the pitch. The batsman, if he's very good, he would cast his shadow on the wicket. And therefore, these balls would not be able to go and hit the wicket. So that is how we understand the shadow. Same thing, photons of light coming in, they are blocked by the object. And where the photons are not able to reach, we see the dark region on the screen, which is known as shadow. Now the shadow is very interesting. You would see it behave in very peculiar way. I can't imagine a person who would not have played by making like various kinds of animals inside the, in the shadow. Shadow of various kinds of animals, right? So you must have played with that too. The idea is the shadow of an opaque object is always black. That is the first property of a shadow. The second property of the shadow is no matter what the color of the object is, right? So maybe the object is red, green, blue, black, whatever. The shadow always is black. As long as the object is opaque, the shadow would be black. Now what happens if instead of using white light, my source is instead of using a white light, the source is colored. So this fourth source, let's say is red, there is an object and then there is a screen. What I would see is the shadow remains black. The shadow is still black. The, the region around the shadow would now be red. If this is green colored, then the region around the shadow would become green colored, but the shadow is still black. So no matter what the color of light is, what the color of the object is, as long as it is opaque, the shadow that I would get is black. Another thing to understand about the shadow is, shadow is seen on a two-dimensional plane. So this is a two-dimensional plane, right? And this object which is casting the shadow is really three-dimensional. So for example, a person, the shadow is cast on the ground, right? When the, when the sun is there. The shadow is on the ground, so it's on a two-dimensional plane, but the person is real, he is three-dimensional. So there is information loss from this converting from this three-dimensional to this two-dimensional projection, that's what we call it, to this two-dimensional shadow, there is loss of information. I have lost certain information during this conversion from three-dimensional to two-dimensional screen. Let's take an example and understand how this information is actually lost. I have the source and here I am holding a cylinder and there is a screen. On the cylinder, if I'm holding the round sides, if, I'm, if the round sides are facing the source and the screen, then you can imagine that the shadow would be circular. That much I understand. Now let's turn this cylinder. Now the shadow would appear to be rectangular. And the reason is very simple. The circular sides, they appear to be straight lines, correct only. And this surface of the cylinder appears to be a rectangle inside the shadow. Thus, a cylinder is casting a rectangular shadow. Now, instead of this cylinder, if I were to replace it by a actual rectangle, actual cube, actual, uh, actual cuboid, I would still get a rectangular shadow. Two things which are very different, cylinder and a cuboid, they are casting the same shadow. And therefore, I was saying that the information of the original object is somewhat lost when we go to the shadow. Like we discussed, Shape and size of such shadows, everyone likes to play with it. It is really very interesting. Let's understand some properties. One of the things is, if I move this object very close to the source, the closer and closer I move, the more of the source this object would start covering. If I put it on the source, then of course the entire light would stop and the entire thing would be shadow. If I move it closer, the shadow would thus become bigger and bigger and bigger. That is the first thing. If the object is moved closer to the source, shadow would become bigger. The second thing is, if I move this screen back, the size of the shadow would increase. That is also very, very natural. Shape of the shadow also changes, right? So shape of this shadow also changes depending upon what is the angle between the source 
the object and the screen. If I change the angle of this screen, the shadow would also change. The, the shape of the shadow would also change. So the relative angle is important. Now one of the examples in your book is this. This example, there is a comb through which I am shining a light. Right? So there is a comb through which I am shining a light. And the book says, although it is very confusing, and I would say to a certain extent it is incorrect also, the book says that the platform on which this comb is kept is dark. It has been covered with black paper. And then here I have placed a mirror. This is nothing but a pure simple mirror. What would happen is that light rays from a torch, right? so there is a source of light right here, and this is how we show the source of light. It is emanating light from <laughs> all around it. This source of light is shining the rays, the rays are coming through here. Of course, the teeth of the comb would block the rays, so their shadows would have appear. But don't focus on the shadows at all. Okay, In the book, the diagram that you show, see, you would focus, start focusing on the shadow and then it would become very confusing. A lot of students ask me this question. So don't look at the shadows at all. Instead, look at the light. So the light is coming like this. Okay, It hits the mirror and from the mirror, the light leaves again. Right? So this is the pattern, the crisscross pattern that you see in your book. This is the kind of pattern that you would see. Let me extend this mirror a little bit more. Okay, so this is how it goes. And that is the crisscross pattern that is drawn in the book. So focus on the light, on the yellow regions, on that, not on the shadows. The remaining regions are all shadows because this is the this is all a black paper. So this entire experiment is happening on black paper. Now we have looked at the shadow. We have also looked at the image. So Pinhole camera creates an image. We understand that there are two different things. What is the difference between a shadow and an image? Now well, that is very important. The shadow is caused by subtraction of light. So light, if I remove light from a region, I would cast a shadow on the screen. That is the first thing. Whereas the image is actually formed by the light, by capturing the light coming out from the object. So for example, light coming out from an object, if I capture it inside, I capture it inside my eye on the retina, I get an image. So the image has all the color information, all the good information, intensity information inside it, whereas the shadow does not. Shadow is the subtraction, is formed by the subtraction. Of course, both are 2D projections, right? So they both are formed on the surface. They are both 2D projections of 3D objects. But one has a lot more information, the image has a lot more information than the uh, shadow. Both can be of variable size. I can make a small image, large image. I can also make a small shadow, large shadow. The big difference is that an image can be both inverted as well as straight. Whereas the shadow is always upright. It can never be inverted. There is no way I can make an inverted shadow without using reflection. Now, when you say that white light is composed of different colors, obviously there must be objects which interact with one of these colors but not the other. Colored glass is a beautiful example. So in this picture you can clearly see how colored glass is stopping some of the light, okay, some of the colors of light while allowing the other colors to come in. So in some ways this colored glass is causing colored shadows. Okay, So the purple glass is producing purple shadow. A green glass would produce a green shadow. Right? So, if the object is not opaque, it is colored and transparent, then the shadow of the object is actually not black, but it can also be colored. Okay? Don't confuse it with the other way around. If the, if the colored light is shown on an opaque object, I will get a black image. If the object is colored right, and transparent, colored and transparent, it is not opaque, it is colored and transparent, then I get a colored shadow. If opaque object would always produce a black shadow. See what happens if I use a perfectly transparent like this piece of glass, if I put it in light. You can do this at your home. Take a piece of glass, take a cup of glass, something made up of glass and put it in front of, in, in, in the path of light. You will see something like this. So the colored objects, perfectly colored objects also cast shadows and the reason or the principle behind this right, is, is known as refraction. Refraction. Okay, and refraction is another way, refraction, okay, this is a N, refraction is another way in which objects interact with light and even the colored objects because, even the, sorry, transparent, 100% transparent objects, because they interact with light and they do refraction, they also cast their shadows and we are able to make out, right, really if you, pee, if you take a piece of glass and you, you hold it in your hand, you will be able to make out its shadow on the ground. 